Hello, so in this video a bit of a novel idea, what we're going to do is look at different types of masks with different types of eyepieces, then put them on the camera, and if it works, see how well you can see out of them. Um, now, as I've said before a few times, if you see a mask for a camera, it's not the same as seeing it with your eyes, because obviously a camera is one sort of wide frame on a regular camera. Uh, for your eyes, you've obviously almost got like two cameras, if you want to think of it that way. So if you've got a mask on like this, because each eye is looking out of each eyepiece, rather than seeing two separate eye holes, what you see is your regular vision with a little bit of ghosting between where the sort of bit like that is on the mask. So, um, on some of these masks they won't look exactly like they would, um, you know, to your eye, and I'm not smart enough or have the inclination to set up two cameras side by side with the same frame width and everything else um, to you know try and simulate what it would look like to the eye. So let's start off with the Israeli M15. This has the sort of good old fashioned American style triangular eyepieces, probably closer to a Draeger M65 than any other mask, but let's put this one over the camera to begin with. So I'll probably have to hold it in place. Um, we have to hope the straps don't really get in the way either, which is another problem of this, because obviously masks are not intended to go over cameras. So. If I can get that sort of, there we go. Okay, so that's, this strap here would be out of the way, so let me try and lift that up. So you'd probably see something like this, but obviously each of your eyes would be seeing out of a separate one of the eyepieces. So it'd be a lot clearer than it looks on here. Um, but as said, you know, these masks are not designed to go over cameras. Um, so, you know, but you'd see something like that really, um, if the mask was fully on. Obviously, bear in mind, as I said, the middle of the frame would be blurred. You wouldn't see, um, you know, this bit with your eyes. You just see a bit of ghosting between your eyes. Um, so, anyway, that's the Israeli M15. So, that's triangular eye lenses. What I'm going to do now is get my Finnish M61. And then we're going to see what another mask of triangular eyepieces looks like, just so you can get a um, comparison idea between two masks. Because no two masks are exactly the same, really, when it comes to that. Unless they're identical models, you know, produced exactly the same. But uh, let's go to another triangle lens mask then. So there we go, a Finnish M61 V2. Um, a really good mask, probably one of the best 60mm masks ever made. Basically a much better version of the American M9. Um, so what we're going to do is put this with its straps over the camera again and see if this sort of works. Okay, so on this map, uh, mask you can see the big oral nasal cup there. Um, your eye line would actually be above that, so in reality this would be kind of down a bit, um, but I don't know if I can actually demonstrate this without, you know, putting straps over the front of the eye pieces, which I don't really want to do, because then obviously that's not how it would look either. Um, so, let's see if I, I can get this as best I can. Right, okay, so this is probably as best as I'm going to be able to get it for you, um, but basically, good field of view of this mask but as said in reality that wouldn't be in your frame of view so you'd get something a bit more like that um, but as said that bit in the middle you're never going to actually see that with your eye because it will ghost them to disappear so you'd see a lot more you know out of one it'd look like that kind of just again it's hard to um, sort of demonstrate with the camera but you would see out of each of the eyepieces of a bit of blur in between um, so it's actually quite naturalistic, it's not a problem at all, just to demonstrate that. So at the moment, I can see a tiny bit of the oral nasal cup, and I can, um, this isn't actually tightened correctly, which might be why. Just a second. It seems the medium straps, well the mid straps, have been tightened far more than the other straps, so, uh, very strange, but anyway. So the top strap's tightened as well, or not? No, okay, so let's try again. So what we have is... Yeah, I can't see yet much of the oral nasal cup at all, just a tiny bit. My field of view's pretty good, and I've just got a little bit of ghosting. As long as you're not like looking at your nose, you're looking forward, you don't notice that there's a thing there at all. All you can really see is like a tiny bit of blur when you're looking at something in the distance, because that's another thing which you can't really do with a camera. You'd have to be focusing at things at various ranges as well, not just a red curtain. And um, that would be kind of, when you're looking at stuff, as long as you're not looking something, you know, like that close to you, um, you don't notice the eyepieces at all because you're looking further away. 
Um, I'm sure you can do lots of experiments with your hands if you're really interested in... Um, I think they say it's a bit like, you know, when they show kids binocular vision, you know, that sort of thing, that if you do that, although you've got that there, um, you know, your hands sort of, you know, <clears throat> blurs away. But anyway, I'm sure most people are smart enough to understand that concept. So let's go to a mask with a totally different kind of lens now, to have a look out of that. Right, so the mask I believe might be a Chinese M64, other people have said yes it's a Chinese M64, other people have said no it's not, it's a different mask. Um, so we'll probably never know. One of the interesting things is people who thought it was the older mask said it would have a hose attached here. Well, it might just be that where the hose would have originally been fused to the mask, they've now, you know, stuck a 40mm intake on the bottom of the mask. Who knows? That's not really important for this. But anyway, this has round eyepieces, and this is a forward-facing mask. Now, this is a great concept if you want to use optics or you're in a tank or something like that, because, you know, you need to be looking through scopes and things like that. So, what I'm going to do here is try and get this, um, if I fully loosen the straps, over the... Um, camera and then hopefully you can see what it's like to look through rounder eyepieces not triangular ones right here we go so let's get that over here that side over there pull it up and hopefully if I can get this close enough to the camera so this is what this one would look like however obviously the thing is that as said you're not going to see the stuff between the eyepieces. That's going to be, in your real vision, uh, totally clear. But um, obviously, like I said, I can't really demonstrate a lot of this on camera. But you can probably see that if each of the eyepieces is close to your eye, you get a fairly good field of vision out of each of the eyepieces. Um, you know, so there's always that. Um, and then obviously, you've just got a bit of blur between the eyepieces. But generally, I prefer forward-facing, flatter eyepieces, just as said before, because if you're using a rifle scope or iron sights, it's a bit easier than having the eyepieces that kind of curve slightly to the side and triangular. What I'll get out now, just because it's an interesting mask, is the S6. Um, because the S6 has those weird kind of fisheye, you know, effect eyepieces I don't really like that make me feel a bit ill. But it'd be good to kind of show those on camera and show sort of how they work if the camera can, you know, display it properly. So the British S6 gas mask or respirator, um, this is quite an interesting one because as I said it's got these sort of curved eyepieces that you can probably see there. Um, they're not actually flat plastic, they are curved. So when you're wearing the mask it can actually have a bit of a fisheye effect which isn't that pleasant when you're like looking around. Now obviously if you um, ignore the fact it makes you feel a bit sick and it gives you a really good field of view then it's probably worth it. And the front bit being flat means that you can use scopes with it fairly well, and then the side bit being curved, you know, so <clears throat> it works well in that regard. But what I want to see, obviously, is if I can get this over the camera properly. And let's just shut that viewfinder, which is really helpful, because now I can't see how well it's on frame or not. What you might be able to see, and I think that's too close to the camera to actually, maybe if I zoom it out. But that's the best it's going to do, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I might not be able to demonstrate this mask, it seems. But, I mean, what I can do is if I try and pull the strap up to the side a little bit, I might be able to fold the mask open. Okay, so this is probably the best you're going to get. So, that's the inside of the mask, quite a cool looking inside section of the mask. So if I do that, um, you know, you'd have to work out in reality where your vision would... Um, sort of take in and blur but you know that's what the S6's vision would look like um, I just stand a bit further back and hold it there but as I said cameras aren't good at replicating this um, because you always get the bit there unless you're filming it with a dual camera okay so I have my MCU2P here um, which is the one that I'm going to try and thread these straps through at some point and repair and also maybe use some sort of silicon sealant on the eyepieces to see if I can stop the leak it's got there. But regardless, uh, you should get a good idea of what a panoramic lens looks like using this. So if I put this up, this is the one that's going to look best on camera, simply because of the fact that obviously a panoramic lens is one big thing, so it works fine with a widescreen camera. Um, to your actual eye, you know, these are good. The thing with panoramic lenses is they're very good for field of view, I can't fault them for that. Um, with some you've got this annoying issue where the oral nasal cup can be a bit big 
which then kind of defeats the purpose of you know have, not having two separate eyepieces because sometimes you still get a bit of ghosting in your vision if the oral nasal cup's a bit big. Um, but the main issue I've had with them is lots of these can be quite difficult to aim with a scope with um, simply because there's not a flat forward facing bit on any of them because it's constantly curved going around the mask. Um, you know that's not brilliant but in terms of actual seeing out of, especially I think for non-military uses um, if you had the option as a civilian of getting either mask um, you know something like this is actually quite good not sorry this mask but you know a panoramic lens because I think it's be less claustrophobic for a lot of people um, but as you can see there yeah you get a very good field of view uh, this one's one of the most famous for a good field of view but it does vary a bit from mask to mask of panoramic lenses because some are like more rectangular kind of you know kind of like looking for a letterbox kind of thing and others are um you know more like this where it's a massively open bit also depends as I said oral nasal cup inside how does that sit against your face and um, you know the shape of it as well how close everything sits to your face because um, obviously if it's a mask where the panoramic lens is closer to your eyes you get a better field of view than if it's one where it sits forwards a little bit um, and then you know does it like that so I'll just quickly get one more panoramic view mask to show you out of just so you can get an idea of what it looks like on a different mask okay so the Polish MP5 as you can see of this it's got um, sort of a foldable sort of flexible silicon kind of material one it's apparently not silicon but the other very similar thing to silicon which I can never remember the name of uh, polyutherene or something like that um, so what I'm gonna do on this one is again just put it there so if we tried to get it at the height it would be, you'd probably get a vision a bit like that from it. As I said, it's going to vary on how close your eyes are to it and everything else, but you get a pretty good field of view with these. Um, the MP5, as I've said before, is actually a pretty good mask. Um, other than some of the bits of plastic on it feeling a little bit brittle, um, I've had absolutely no faults with these. Um, i just pop it on. I don't particularly like the French system they used on it of uh, hooking the hooks on to actually seal it, but whatever. But yeah, you get a pretty good field of view. To my actual eyes, um, I can't see bottom left and bottom right where this bit is, where it gets narrower. Uh, I can see up very well. There's barely any restriction on view looking up, so I can see almost directly on top of me. Yes, the uh, nose cone bit is actually visible, the nose cup, uh, but when you're looking forward again, that's not really a problem. But, you know, everything where you can see my face, I can pretty much see. So, yeah, the MP5 is a good mask. It's got a drinking tube bit on it. It's got a voice diaphragm. It's got an exhale valve, so there's always that. So, yeah, this is actually a fairly good mask, as I've said before. Some people seem to hate this mask, but it's not a bad design at all, in my opinion. Um, but there you go. At least the polyurethane, or whatever they call it, that's on these, um, ages better than silicon. It doesn't go all yellow. As you can see, that's fairly clean, and if you gave it a wipe out inside, it'd be even cleaner. But uh, hopefully this has shown you like how different masks look if you're looking out of them to a degree. As I said, the camera's never going to do it properly, unless you had like two of the cameras that film side by side for like 3D video, and then you were looking at it through 3D glasses. Uh, unless you did all that, I don't think you're going to get an accurate, totally accurate depiction. But if you're doing all that, you know, it's probably just less effort to buy a gas mask and look through it, isn't it? Um, so there you go. Um, hopefully this has given you a good idea of what it looks like if you're actually, you know, looking out of a load of these masks.